So the latest update for Photoshop CC 2019 has dropped. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of those new features. Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. Photoshop CC 2019 update has dropped at Adobe Max. There's a bunch of new features. We've got some small features, some big features, and we're going to be covering most of those in this video. So let's jump into it. So first of all, we've got the content aware fill feature and you can see I have an image on screen, very tropical. We've got some trees, some ocean here, and we also have a boat. I want to remove that boat. Now, normally we would use the healing brush, the patch tool, the clone stamp tool. We're going to simply just make a selection and drag over the boat here using one of the basic selection tools. It could be the lasso tool, the marquee tool, and we're simply going to go up to edit and down to content aware fill. And it will bring up this separate window. We can see the selection of the area we want to remove here. And we also have this green sampling area. Now this is the area of the image that we're going to be feeding Adobe Sensei, the AI behind this feature in Photoshop. So let's give this a bit more ocean to work with. We can brush into this to remove from the selection or we can hold down Alt on the keyboard and we can just brush in a bit more ocean, just feeding it a bit more data to work with. And you can see the preview on the right here, it's zoomed in very large, <laughs> let's just zoom that back out. But you can see I've barely done anything and it's already done a fantastic job removing this boat from the scene. And we've got a few options over here that we can play with as well. You've got scale, mirror, you can view the excluded area, you can adjust the opacity of this sampling area. But having this preview is super handy and if I click OK, and just deselect this and zoom in. <laughs> you can see that I missed the person there, so I missed the person. But if I just go back to that, actually, in fact, let's do that again. We'll just grab those people that I missed. Literally just do that. Click OK. Boom. It's already removed them, literally, in no time at all. And the great thing about this is you can output to either the existing layer or a new layer. So I can just turn this on and off and then just merge that all together into one layer if I want. So this is a super, super powerful feature. They did something called Content Aware Scaling before, similar effect where you would stretch an image and rather than just skew it out of shape, it would kind of try and cleverly extend the image. This is very similar, but you can literally just drag over anything, make a selection and boom, it's gone. So I'm looking forward to putting this one through its paces. I'm gonna test this feature out and see how far I can push it. Okay, next, this is one of my favorites, live blending modes. So you can see here, I have an image of a city at night. Very, very cool. And on a separate layer, I've just grabbed the brush tool and brushed in some like pinky red and some purple. And this is on a separate layer. Now I would like to blend these colors into the image. Normally I'd have to click the drop down here for blending modes. And one by one, I'd have to pick a different blending mode and then go through and preview it like so. However, this is now a thing of the past. I can simply open the drop down, hover over each of the options, and I get a real time preview exactly how it's going to look. This is a huge time saver. Like, I absolutely love this. So I can just quickly scroll down here. And I think soft light. Yeah, that probably looks the best. I'll go with that one. So if you're new to Photoshop and you're learning blending modes still, you can really start to get an understanding of how different blending modes affect different images and you might start to use blending modes that actually you'd never really considered before. So super, super cool. Love it, love it, love it. Next, we've got the frame tool. So you can see here I've created two frames already. The frame tool is over here on the toolbar. Click and just click and drag. You can add a frame, which is great for adding placeholders for content. You've got something similar to this in InDesign already. And we can add circles or ellipses. If you want to create a circle or a square, just hold down shift and it will scale that proportionally. Now I've already created two already, dog frame and cat frame, because I've got some images. So let's grab the image of the dog and we'll drag this to the frame and you can see it adds that in brilliantly and it keeps it scaled proportionally as well. So it doesn't skew it out of shape or add it in with a, with a crazy zoomed crop if it's a high res image. So this is really cool. And it also keeps this as a smart object so I can scale this up, scale it down and I won't get any degradation in quality. Something else that's also really cool, if I just add the cat image 
into the circular frame here and deselect this. So you can see this is how it looks. I can double click this as well and it shows me where the edge of the image actually is. So I've got a bit more on the top and a bit more on the bottom. So if I go to edit and down to free transform, what I can do is I can move this around and adjust the crop. I'll make this a bit bigger as well. And then I can just click the checkbox up here, or well not the checkbox, the tick up here to set that transformation. I can press return. I can just select the move tool, lots of different ways. And there we go, we've easily adjusted that crop. And as I say, it's a smart object as well. And I can move this around if I need to. So if you've got lots of content and you haven't got the images or you're planning content, or you just want to create a grid of images, you can add loads and loads of these placeholders, these frames, and then you can just add in all the content and it scales it all proportionally, keeps it nice and crisp as a smart object. Like, boom, brilliant. Okay, next, we've got a pretty small but pretty mighty feature that they've added in Photoshop, and this is being able to undo very, very easily. Okay, so you can see I've got some text here on screen, and in previous versions of Photoshop, you go to edit, and you'd have step backwards here, and it's a strange shortcut. It's Alt or Option with Command or Control Z, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. And if you kept pressing Command or Control Z, it would simply undo and redo that last action. However, that is now a thing of the past. You go to Edit, and very similar to Illustrator and XD, you simply press Command or Control Z over and over again, and it will just keep undoing, undoing, and undoing. You can now undo many more times. So, like I say, a very small change, but one that is welcome nonetheless. And at Adobe Max, this feature got a huge cheer from all the creatives in the room. Okay, next, another small change. This is auto commit. So you can see I've got some text here on screen and I can select this with the type tool. And if I make a change, text. So what I would need to do now to confirm this change is either click up here or go to like file and select save. And that's one way around it, but it kind of commits me to saving a document I might not want to. Now in the latest version of Photoshop, I simply just hover my mouse over here and click, even with the text tool still selected. Or I can just select another layer. There's loads of different ways that you can just get out of this now and it's just super easy to jump in, make the change and then click on the space around the text and it will just confirm that change. So this is the last of the major features and then we've got a few more that I'm going to cover at the end. This is one of my other favorites and this is symmetry mode. Oh, this feature is so cool. So you can see here, I've got a new document. I've added a new layer that I'm going to brush onto. And if I just select the brush tool, you can see I've created this already. And you'll notice in the options bar at the top, we have a butterfly and we can click this and I can turn off symmetry and it might be off by default. So look, we can click this. We've got lots, uh, lops, I don't know what lops means. Lots of different options here. So let's start with something like dual axes and it creates this, and we can move this around, we can scale it up or down, whatever we want, and just click on the tick up here to confirm that. So there we go, we've now got our axes. I've got the brush tool selected. Let's go and pick a, a nice pretty color. We'll go for like a blue, I think. Watch this. As I brush onto the new layer, it creates that symmetry in every other segment. Now this is insane, I absolutely love this. I mean, that looks pretty terrible. So let's, let's undo that. Okay, so let's try something a bit more complicated now. So we'll go to the butterfly and we'll select mandala and you can choose the number of segments. Let's go for eight just because why not? And I'm just going to click the tick up here, grab my brush tool. Look at this. Look how awesome that is. In fact, I'm gonna grab another color and we'll make the brush slightly thicker Ah, oh, and, th and this is just me putting minimal effort into this. Like there is zero skill. I'm just dragging the brush around and I've been able to create this, which is still quite terrible admittedly, but I'm sure you can do much better. <laughs> okay, so a few more minor updates that we're going to cover. You can now go to window, down to workspace, and you can lock your workspace. This just stops you accidentally dragging panels around by mistake. We've all done it. I know I've done it a million times. I set my workspace up, I accidentally drag a panel out and then I've got to put it back. This just lets you lock your workspace so you can't do that by mistake. Another small change is if you go to edit and free transform, normally you would scale your content proportionally by holding shift. However, if you see now, I'm holding shift and it's distorting it. 
and actually by not holding shift, it keeps it scaled proportionally, or I can scale from the center by holding Alt as well. So essentially they've swapped around the functionality of the shift key in relation to keeping the object proportional. And this is something that's taking a bit of getting used to, but it is a welcome change anyway. Okay, so two more things that I'm going to cover super quickly. If we go to window and down to color, you can see you get the color window here. Now you might have this one selected by default, the hue cube, and you can pick your color from here. We've got hue and saturation and lightness and darkness and colors and things. From the menu icon at the top right, you can now select color wheel and we just have a different way to navigate this. So we have this triangle here that we can navigate similar properties, saturation, lightness, color, hue. We can drag around this ring here to pick the hue we would like. And then we also have the sliders here as well with the hue, saturation, and the brightness values here as well. So you can adjust either of these and you can see it adjusts the other one respectively. And last but not least, if I go up to edit, down to free transform, in the options bar, you normally have the reference point options here. You can pick a different reference point for your selected object, and you can now just deselect this by unchecking that box. And this is now not selectable. Okay, so there we go. Those are the main changes in Photoshop CC 2019. What are your favorites? Let me know down below. I can't wait to give symmetry mode a go and just just get super creative creating all these symmetrical patterns. Content aware fill looks awesome, just instantly whipping out something from a scene, but also being able to preview blending modes live in real time. Oh, it's gonna save me so much time. And if you'd like to check out any of this stuff for yourself, I will add a link in the video description to the original blog post. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.